You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of the 90 Min Football Network. As ever, I am your host, Harry Simu, and I'm delighted to be joined by a very, very special guest for this week's edition of the Opposition View. Welcome, uh, my esteemed colleague, good friend, Mr. Grizz Khan, the man who has the pleasure also of sitting next to me when we film on 90 Min. How are you doing? Amazing! It's this. It feels so weird. We're so far apart, man. I know like, the distance is killing us. Do you know what I mean? This is killing me, man. I'm so used to sort of literally rubbing shoulders with you, but listen, it's been a pleasure, man. Pleasure for having me on. Um, I love your intro, Harry. That's the first time I've. Forgive me, right? Forgive me, but that's the first time I've watched your intro. It's proper. <laughs> You know, we need to yes. talk afterwards, man. I need some help with that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, do you know man. what? I, I actually <laughs> want to change it. I'm a bit fed up of it, but it's because I see it every day. That's why. I exactly. Mean, for, 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 for someone who's seen it for the first time, it's it's, it's proper <laughs> nice. It's proper good. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. How, how you been anyway, mate? How's how's things in general, aside from football? Yeah, from yeah good, man. Good, man. Um, things are settling down after the, the horrible... Horrible year and a half or a couple of years, isn't it? With all, all the pandemic and everything, things are settling down again. And, and, you know, it's coming up to Christmas and New Year. So extra busy with everything else as well. But yeah, and now international breaks over. We can like really, really get stuck into the, the real football, so to speak. Absolutely. We can get our teeth into it right now. And at the time of recording, there are two days, 21 hours, nine minutes and 26 seconds until Arsenal take Count on Liverpool. <laughs> at Anfield. Exactly. Um, Saturday, 5.30 kickoff. Big, big game uh, for both sides. For Liverpool, it's a big game to, you know, to try and keep the pace with the teams right at the very top of the table. It's been a bit of a difficult run for Liverpool, but we'll talk about that in a moment. For Arsenal, who, of course, are looking to uh, keep in touch with those teams challenging for the European places. I guess as an Arsenal fan, this gives us an opportunity to have a, a, another look at this team because in recent weeks, there have been a few tests, if you like. People said we'd struggle against Aston Villa. We came through that with flying colours. People said we'd struggle against Leicester and we went to uh, the King Power Stadium and won uh, and won pretty well in the end. So, um, Grizz, before we get into this particular fixture, talk to me a little bit about Liverpool because it's two wins from the last five in the Premier League, just the one defeat in that, that defeat at West Ham. What do you put it down to? What do you put, and I know, look, we say it's a dip in form and, and by anybody else's standards, you'd say it's still an okay run of results. But Liverpool have set the bar so high over the last few seasons. This run has come as a bit of a surprise to me. What do you put the form down to? So, yeah, it's difficult to pinpoint. Um, you know, if I could, if I could, exactly pinpoint it i'd be sitting there on the touchline with with jürgen klopp and pep linders as their sort of first team analyst so look it's it's very difficult to exactly pinpoint it but it's a culmination look overall of just um i, I done it i done a sort of a season um a season so far uh, on my channel sunday and i and i and i called ourselves um we seem leggy so it's a culmination of a core group of 14, 15 players that have been used continuously um, for quite a heavy period. And look, this Premier League this season is, is shown, it's unforgiving. There is absolutely no easy games. I mean, you know, the likes of City have dropped points to, to Crystal Palace, Southampton, who would have thought? Chelsea dropped points to Burnley the other day, who would have thought? So... And we dropped points to to Brentford and 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 Brighton. Obviously, the West Ham defeat. We didn't expect a defeat, but you can lose to West Ham, who are in a rich vein of form. But look, overall, I'd say it's just not having, not being able to to freshen up the squad to the desired level. I think that's what I I would put it down to mainly. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And and as you say, the, the league is very unforgiving. And one of the things that's been really positive about Arsenal's recent run of form, or one of the things that's helped us achieve that positive run of form, is the fact that we have been 
better off than we have been in the past with injuries. We've had a, a, a back four that we've been able to pick pretty much the same every week with the exception of Kieran Tierney over the last few weeks. The, the midfield's been as consistent as it can be and so is the front line. So consistency in the selection is massive. But I mean, looking at the problems that Liverpool had at West Ham and, and the problems that they had um mm-hmm you know, against Brighton, against Brentford, which was a place that we dropped points at as well in the first game of the season. What would you say Arsenal fans should be looking at as a potential weakness? What should we be looking to try and exploit of this Liverpool side? So, so look, it's a difficult one, I think, for Arsenal in terms of if you look at the teams that have given us issues, um, So, for example, Bright, let's look at the last two games, right? So, Brighton sort of watched, or it very much seems they they saw how City played against us with no striker, flooded the midfield, and just kept our centre backs sort of idle. They didn't have no striker to mark, no nothing. And then the midfield totally dominated our midfield because, like, City had five, six in there. Brighton done it obviously with with lesser calibre of player, but brilliantly executed. And then West Ham took a totally different approach where they really gave us a physical game. They looked for set pieces. They they had like sort of the, the core spine of their team. If you look through it, Suchek, Rice, Agbona, Dawson, who came on, uh, Zuma, all six foot three plus. So they targeted, their game plan was totally different from Brighton's, for example. Brighton yeah. looked to dominate midfield sort of control, try to control our midfield and and they did just very much like City did. West Ham done the physical approach. Arsenal, I don't know what approach Arsenal will bring because I don't think you've got the physicality in your throughout your team to bring the physical approach. Even though someone told me that you guys have got the best record of set pieces this season, I did not know that and that came as a huge shock. So that's something that you could target for sure, looking back at our, our set pieces against West Ham. And with the Brighton approach, I don't know if you can enforce that game on us because you do play with striker. In fact, in recent games, you've been playing with two, Lacazette and Obama Yang. So I'm not sure if they're drilled enough or have got the discipline to sort of both of them drop in midfield and sort of, you know, um, leave our centre-backs idle. So... He's going to have to come out with a different type of game plan, a game plan that's sort of suited to your team best. And obviously, you know more. But to me, that seems very strong defensively, a structure that you've seemed to have defensively very strong. And then, like you have done in the past, where you've caught us a couple of times on the break, like in the charity, was it the charity shield you played us, wasn't it? You caught us on the counter attack and and at your ground. And at your ground, you caught us with a counter-attack and wait for our mistakes almost. I'd say that's your that's your best option. But again, we probably go into it. It depends on what kind of lineup you put up and any absentees that you may have. So in terms of absentees at the time of recording, and we are recording this on Wednesday night, uh, we don't know whether Thomas Partey is going to be available. And that is a big, big blow for Arsenal. Uh, the idea of him being missing is a, is a big problem, I think against Watford last week or the week before, obviously it was the international break. We got away with a midfield pairing of Maitland-Niles and Lokonga, but I don't think you're going to get away with that at Anfield. So that's the big concern around Arsenal going into this fixture. And I just wonder if that will lead to Mikel Arteta maybe abandoning the two up front and, and opting for an extra body in midfield to perhaps compensate for the absence of Thomas Partey. And, and this is where I think he's got a really difficult task now because Arsenal have been in a rich vein of form. You know, we've we've as you've said, we've played pretty well with the two forwards. And and granted, Lacazette plays in a slightly deeper position, becomes part of the midfield when we don't have the ball. But I just wonder if if Thomas Partey is indeed missing. And we don't know that for sure. We'll probably learn a bit more uh, on Thursday when Mikel speaks to the press. But it just worries me a little bit that he might decide to move away from what served us so well in recent weeks in an attempt to compensate for that. And then it feels like you're you're taking a step backwards again. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, It's a really difficult situation to be in. I think for me, I see this game, and I I know you mentioned to me off air that a lot of Arsenal fans feel that Arsenal have a really good chance this time around. To me, this one feels like a free hit. 
it feels like if we go to Anfield and at the very least give a good account of ourselves, make ourselves very difficult to beat, then we can come away saying, yes, this Arsenal team are still on the right trajectory, are still on the right path. Equally, you know, there's no shame in losing heavily at Anfield because Liverpool are a very good side. So I'm kind of looking at this as if we get something, great. It's another win for Arteta. Even if it's a draw, it's still a win for Arteta to kind of put in his back pocket and, and store up in terms of credit so that when the, the haters and the, the critics come out again, he's got that there. But equally, if we don't get anything, I, I don't think there can be any Arsenal fan out there, if they're being realistic about where we're at and where we need to be, that will be massively disappointed. Do you feel like as a Liverpool man, this is a dangerous fixture for you because Arsenal have the capabilities to give you a game, but also haven't shown enough to suggest that they're above you in the pecking order, therefore you want to win it? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I, I, I agree with everything you said in terms of it's a very, very difficult one for Arteta. You know, he's found he's found a very stable back four, for example. He's found a very, uh, the personnel hasn't changed much. Obviously, Tavares has come in for Tierney the last couple of games, is it? Or just the last yeah. one? Last couple yeah, of last, games. Last couple so games. he's got a selection dilemma there. And the key to me looking from, from the opposition side is Partey. As you said, if your center if your central midfield pairing is Lakonga and and Maitland Niles going to Anfield, and don't forget, we're going to be very, very hungry to come back from the defeat. So it's look, it is what it is. We very rarely get beaten, right? And and the fact is when we do get beaten, we usually tend to go hard again. And it's, I feel as though, like, normally, and, I, and I'll say this, and even though I'm on an Arsenal channel, I'll say it, normally it's it's the go-to fixture for us in terms of Arsenal at home, and we know we, we, tend, to tr we tend to overwhelm you. Um, and that first goal leads to sort of usually a quick second and, and sort of the floodgates open and we, we, we ease off and comfortably win. But... I genuinely think if Partey is playing, and this is key, this is obviously we don't know if Partey is going to play or not. I genuinely think Partey makes a difference between, in my opinion, a comfortable evening for us and an uncomfortable evening for us. I think that's how important he is, especially to the way you guys play. Not only that, but especially to the to the alternatives that you've got. Like, don't get me wrong, I rate Lukongo, uh, uh, is it? Lukonga? Yeah. And I rate maitland Nowers, but you're possibly going to be up against Fabinho, Thiago, Henderson, for example. Um, you know, you most neutrals would say, well, you know, that midfielder will get the better of you guys. But as, but then again, as long as you've got someone, someone like a Smith Rowe who's been in scintillating form, and, and Aubameyang who seems to have found his groove, so to speak, and his desire to work again, there's always a threat with these kind of players around. Um, as I said, it depends on, on Partey. If Partey plays, I think it could be an awkward evening for us where we will have to work very hard to win. If Partey is not, I genuinely think we would we, we probably have a comfortable afternoon against the, against the midfield. And again, the key to it is if he plays Lacazette or not. Like, has Lacazette, you probably know more, has Lacazette got the discipline to play in that almost for almost withdrawn role without the ball? Because you're going to have to, he's going to have to do that, right? So... You know, again, it depends on, he probably brings back Odegaard, or I don't know, who else will he bring back into that midfield to sort of compensate for the loss of Partey, as you said. So it's a tricky one to call from an Arsenal point of view. Um, but I think the confidence levels in your within your team should indicate that, as you said, at the very least, you don't get battered like you normally tend to do. As you said, if it's a 1-0, 2-1 even 2-0 at max, and you've shown yourself in better colours, then you know you've got players coming back. We haven't got smashed at Anfield. Something to keep going. It's not a total momentum killer, if you know what I mean. A total yeah. momentum killer would be 5-0, 4-0. You think, ah, oh, we had a little run, we're back to square one again. I genuinely don't think that's the case. Yeah, I think that too. And I think when you, when you analyse Arsenal this season, I think you have to be... Um, 
understanding of the nature of the division as well as a whole, that teams can get beat. You know, it's not impossible for the likes of Liverpool to go to West Ham and get beat or to be held at home by somebody like Brighton. So it is, um, you know, it is the nature of the league that it's almost impossible pretty much to to win every single game. There will be bumps in the road. It's always been impossible to win every single game. But now more so than ever, everybody can beat everybody. And that's why the Premier League in so many people's eyes is is the best league in the world. It's interesting because one of the things you mentioned was Liverpool and their fast starts. And that's been something that's normally killed us at Anfield over the years. And it's something that I've always looked at Jurgen Klopp's side and gone, I wish we did that. I wish we started games in that vein and we started games with that level of intensity and intent. And what I have to say about Arsenal in recent times is that we have done that more often. And I I think the first 20 minutes of this is going to be fascinating. Are Arsenal going to say, you know what, we're going to go toe-to-toe with Liverpool and try and be aggressive at the beginning or will wounds from previous seasons lead to them sitting off and dropping deep, in which case giving Liverpool the opportunity to to grab the game by the scruff of the neck. I think that would be the wrong approach, but it would just be interesting to see how confident this Arsenal side are, because if they do come out, squeeze up to the halfway line from the off and try and be aggressive, then you're saying, hold on a minute, this is a, a very confident Arsenal side who are here to give it a go. If they do the opposite, you'd say that there's still an inferiority complex in this Arsenal squad when faced with a side like Liverpool. And... Um, and that's why I think that the opening exchanges are going to be really, really interesting. There's been a lot of talk this week, Grizz, about absentees. We've we've talk, touched on some of Arsenal's. There's been some talk about some Liverpool players as well that will potentially be missing. We know Robertson went off with an injury uh, while on international duty. Can you just give us an update as of now with regards to who is touch and go, who's available, who's not available? Because it's been a lot to keep up with. Yeah, look, it always is after international break, isn't it? When you send players away, you know, it's in the lap of the gods how and what kind of health they come back and sort of, you know, certain sort of certain Liverpool fan channels are talking about our injury list being, you know, very, very long. It's it's not as bad as some have made out. So look, for sure Bobby Firmino is out. For sure Robertson will be out. For sure Curtis Jones is out. Um, and Naby Keita. So they're the four that are... And Joe Gomez, beg your pardon. So that's the five that are definitely out. Gomez, Naby Keita, um, Bobby Firmino and Robertson. Um, but coming back, uh, who are 50-50 and coming back, who I think will definitely start and play is Sadio Mane and Henderson, which is a big, big relief. Um, so look... And Bob and uh, and Fabinho and Allison have come back from Brazil, as far as I know, fine as well. So look, with regards to our lineup on on Saturday, I, I genuinely think we'll have a very very strong lineup. There will be no excuses from that aspect, absolutely not. Um, we've got a couple of the, as I said, I've, as I've gone through, we've got a few of the squad players missing, but that's just one of those things that, as as we've discussed before, every team has. None of them are sort of long-term. Um, Bobby Firmino, Arsenal fans will have horrid memories of Bobby Firmino, so you'll be glad to know that he's not playing because he tends to really turn up against Arsenal, uh, especially at Anfield. Um, and yeah, apart from that, um, you know, Simikas, our, our, newly, uh, our newly crowned Greek scouser, um, <laughs> has, been in, has been in very, very good form. So he steps right into the into the into the position and role of Robertson, and the rest of the team pretty much picks itself. If I was to pick a team, I probably could, I could probably nail it. To be honest with you, if if nothing else happens, obviously as you said, we're recording this on Wednesday, but if nothing else happens, I could probably nail the eleven for you to pass it on to to Arteta and the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Um, just finally, Grizz, how do you see this one going? Let, let's have a prediction. Let's uh, stick our necks out on the line here. So I'll, what I'll do, <laughs> as you know, <laughs> I'll try to cover all bases now. <laughs> what, what, what I'll do, I'll give you a prediction with Partey and a okay. prediction without Partey. That's fair enough, right? Yeah. I think if Partey is not playing, I think we beat you 3-1, 3-0. I'll go 3-0 if Partey is not playing. If Partey is playing, I think we beat you 2-1. How's that? 
Interesting, interesting. Yeah. I, you know what? I'm not I genuinely reveal... think, I genuinely, but the thing is, right, I'm still confident because even if Partey does make it, how fit will he be, Harry? Like he's been touch and go, you touch and go. He's been, he's begin, apparently I read he's got that abductor injury, isn't it? Which is quite, you know, problematic, can be problematic. You want to be totally 100% fit. What if it flares up again, he comes off. That would be a nightmare for you guys. So I'm pretty confident because I know we how what we like after a defeat. So yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty confident. I'm not going to sit here and suddenly say oh, I'm not. Yeah, and 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 that's fair. I think if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be confident as well at home uh, under the light to Anfield. And when you look at our last few trips to Anfield, uh, you've managed to score at least three goals in each of the last three. So you have a very good record. You are the superior side. I don't think there's any doubt or question about that. Um, and the fact that I've spent the beginning of the show talking about the fact that I would be quite happy with a point or, you know, a very good resolute display from the Arsenal says it all about where we are in terms of our two teams at this present stage. I'm not going to share my prediction because I'm going to share it on the podcast when we when I share my preferred Fair lineup. Enough. Sure. But I'll tell you offline anyway. No worries. Um, no, but sure I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, very quickly, shall I tell you what from an Arsenal fan point of view or from a Liverpool fan point of view, you've it's the first time I can remember, Harry, that you've got a good back five. I genuinely mean that. And I, and you know I rate, you know, I told you Ben White's a fantastic signing. You know, Gabriel, I rate very highly. And, and whether it's Tavares or Tierney, that's solid. And Tommy Yasu has been a revelation as well. And, and of course, your keeper. So it's the first time in years that I can remember you guys coming to Anfield without a weakness at the back. Because normally you've always got a Louise in there or a, or a, or a Chambers or someone. Do you know what I mean? This time, I don't think you've got a weak player in the back and that bodes well for you guys. Yeah, for sure. And and that's why I think Arsenal fans are probably feeling a little bit more optimistic about mm. this weekend because as I said on a show that we did earlier today, for me it's um it's the defense that's made the difference in this run. It's not the attack. You know, we yeah. we've always had Aubameyang, we've always had Lacazette, we've always had decent enough wingers and and sort of attacking players, but we've never had that defensive spine and defensive solidarity that's meant that even when we're not at our best, we are constantly in games and we can then nick games as we've done so often during this run that we're currently on, knowing that we have what it takes to defend that lead once we get it. And that's why I think Arsenal fans are feeling a lot more positive, a lot more optimistic. I think people were maybe blinded by the fact that Mikel Arteta had worked under Pep Guardiola and assumed that his philosophy was going to be attack, attack, attack. Actually, it's been the opposite. He's been very pragmatic. He's clearly worked on building a defence first and, and he's taken that approach because he obviously feels that's the way to make Arsenal more competitive in the interim. So, yeah, lots to be positive about from an Arsenal point of view, but I'm just, as always, Grizz, I'm worried that if we do get beat and we beat get beat comprehensively, that the naysayers are going to crop up again and, and the whole mood around the club, which has been largely positive in recent months, is going to be uh, toxic and negative again. And that's what I really want to avoid. So fingers crossed we get a performance. Um, Grizz, tell everybody how they can check your channel out. Um, uh, they can find you obviously on 90 Min uh, with myself um, regularly, but You've got your own channel. How can people find it? Yeah, look, I've, I've recently started, a, as, as you know, recently started a, a, a small channel. Um, it's obviously, when I say predominantly Liverpool, it's not actually predominantly Liverpool, but it, m mostly Liverpool. But obviously, I try to cover as many clubs um, as possible as well. And look, if anybody wants to hear more of my ramblings, then come over to Grizz Khan TV. Just type in Grizz Khan and find me over there. And obviously... Me and you over in 90 minutes. We'll, uh, I'm sure we'll lock horns very soon. Yep, yeah, I'm sure we will. Make sure you head over and subscribe to Grizzly's channel. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. So do check it out. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to this channel if you're new. And if you're listening via the audio platforms, make sure you leave us a review. We'll be back very, very soon with more Arsenal content. Until next time, take care. Stay safe. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.